Good day, students. Welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this installment, we're going to be going, to, going through problems 21 to 25 of the Integrated Algebra Regents exam for June 2014. Don't forget to visit our website at mathgodserve.com for an access to a wide variety of math tutorials ranging from algebra to calculus. All right, let's take a look at problem number 21. It says, when factored completely, the expression 3x squared minus 9x plus 6 is equivalent to, so this is um, assessing our ability to factor um, quadratic expressions completely. So let's go ahead and write down the expression 3x squared minus 9x plus 6. If you notice, 3 is a factor of the three um, terms here. Okay, let me make it obvious. We have 3 times x squared minus 3 times 3 times x um, plus 2 times 3. So you notice that we have a common factor, a greatest common factor, namely 3, that must be extracted. Note the problem says when factored completely. Okay, so we can't leave um, any factors in any of the quantities. It must be factored out, any common factor. Let's go ahead and pull out that greatest common factor, which is 3. So that leaves us with x squared minus 3x plus 2. Now, if we look at this quadratic trinomial, we're going to attempt to factor it using the x game. So let's go ahead and create our little x game, or it's also called the AC method. Now, anytime you're using the AC method, you also want to ask yourself, do you have to factor by grouping or do you are you going to be able to use a shortcut you always look at the value of a a in this problem is one imagine there's a one here anytime a is one you do not need to factor by grouping you can go directly from the x grid to the factored form all right let me illustrate that for you so this is um a is a coefficient of x squared b is a coefficient of x and c is a constant so AC goes on top, B goes on the bottom, AC, A times C, and then um, B goes on the bottom. So A times C is 1 times 2, which is 2, and then uh, B is negative 3. Now you ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to give you 2 and add to give you negative 3? Uh, it's going to have to be a variation of 1 and 2 because... Um, 1 times 2 is 2. Those are the only factors of 2. But since there's a minus here, what if we introduce a negative and a negative here? Does this x game work? Nine, negative 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. That's good. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. Excellent. So since a is 1, we don't need to factor by grouping. We can jump to our factored form. What is our factored form? Bring down this 3. 3 times x, you extract the first number in your x game to the left, minus 1 times x, and then you extract the second number, minus 2. And this is the factored form of the original expression 3x squared minus 9x plus 6. So we can clearly see that our answer is option number 4. One thing I also want to highlight is that option 1 is correct also. But there is a problem with option one. Do you see what the problem is? The problem is option one is not factored completely. Okay, even it's a possible um, factored form for this expression, but the completely factored form is option number four. Okay. All right, let's take a look at um, problem number 22. It says the equation P equals 0 0.0089 T squared plus 1.1149t plus 78.4491 models the United States population P in millions since 1900. If T represents the number of years after 1900, then what is the estimated population in 2025 to the nearest tenth of a million? So we have the model right there. So with this model, all we just have to do is find what the value of t is and then plug it into um, this model wherever you have t, evaluate the resulting expression, 
and that will tell you the population in um, 2025. All right, so let's go ahead and find T. So it says T is the time as the number of years um, after 1900. So how do we calculate that? What we'll simply do is we're going to take the final year, which is 2025, minus the initial year, which is 1900. And the difference would tell us uh, how many years after 1900 takes you to 2025. If you compute the difference, you have 125 years. So that is what T is. So the population in 2025 is P of 125. What does this mean? It means that all these spots that you have T in this model, you're going to substitute 125, all right? So we have 0 0.0089 times 125 square plus 1.1149 times 125 plus 78.4491. So we just use our calculators to uh, compute the value of this expression. So let's see. Um, <clears throat> so we have. 0.0089 parenthesis 125 close that square and then to that we're going to add 1.1149 1 times 125 plus 78.4491 enter we get 300 and 56.8741, but if we round it to the nearest tenth of a million, the tenth place is a decimal place right behind the decimal point. All right, so since um, the number behind it is five or greater, we have to round up. So let's go ahead. So it's 8741. So this is going to be approximately 356.8741. Or we round into the nearest um, tenth of a million. So this place right here, that's where we're going to round up. This is five or greater, so we're going to add one. So our answer is going to be 356.9 million people. All right? So this basically is the answer, and we can see that option number four is our correct solution. All right, let's take a look at um, number 23. It says, which graph represents an absolute value equation? So there are different ways you can do this. If you remember what your family of curves look like, this is easy to just automatically determine. Another way you can uh, get the answer to this question is by writing down an absolute value function. Y is equal to absolute value of, let's say, um, 2. I'm sorry, absolute value of x. All right, um, let's shift it up by two units. I'm just making this up. You can use any any um, absolute value function you like. Plug in the calculator and then you ask yourself, which of my which which of these looks similar to what I graphed? Okay, so go to your Y menu and then graph the equation absolute value equation you came up with. So let's see, absolute value. We can go to the catalog catalog let me move this up so you can see the second function zero second function zero takes you to the catalog menu hit enter for absolute value function x plus two enter graph bam what does that look like that looks like a v so this is what absolute value functions look like so you can automatically see that um, this, our answer is option number two, okay? But it's important for you to know what the appearance of parent functions look like. So when you see a function, you can automatically identify what the graph um, is. So in this case right here, option number one, this is an exponential function. Belongs to the exponential family. This right here is a quadratic. Right, and then this one right here is a linear. And in this V type of functions belong to the absolute value. 
So it's really important, especially in higher level math, to automatically know what a family of curve looks like based on the appearance of the graph. What the equation looks like based on the appearance of the graph. That is really, really important. All right, let's take a look at problem 24. This is a simplification of algebraic fractions. Um, it says the expression a over b minus one third is equivalent to, so let's see what that expression is equivalent to, a over b minus one over three. In order for us to combine these two fractions, we just have to find the LCD. And the LCD of um, b, a variable and a constant three, is three b. Because b goes here three times and three goes here b times, okay? So after finding your LCD, if you want to combine two fractions, um, what you just have to do is ensure that the denominators are both equal to the LCD. So I want this B to become 3B. What do I do? I multiply top and bottom by 3. And then this one right here, one third, I want the denominator to be 3B. So what do I do? Multiply the numerator and the denominator by B. All right, so that yields uh, 3A over 3B minus b over 3b. Now that your denominators are identical, we can combine the fractions as 3a minus b over 3b. All right, and that clearly shows us that our correct answer is option number three. All right. Now let's take a look at problem 25. We're asked to Find which value of x is a solution to the equation. Now, there are three different ways we can do this. One way we can do this is by plugging in the answers to see which one works out. Or we can just solve it algebraically, okay? Let's go ahead and solve it algebraically. There are two ways we can solve this algebraically. One involves just isolating x without simplification. And the other method involves simplification of both sides of the equations first and then isolating x afterwards. Okay, so let me use the second method. It doesn't really matter the method you use, but I'll use the second method. I'll, I want to simplify the left side completely first and then proceed to isolate uh, x. So I'll distribute the 2 to both terms, and then we have 2x minus 8 plus 7 equals 3. So don't forget to distribute this 2 to both numbers, all right? And then when you combine those two, you have 2x minus 1 equals 3. The reason I like simplification is when it's simplified, it looks less intimidating to work with, all right? But look, when it looks like this, some students might be confused as to how to proceed. But when it's simplified, then you say, okay, now I can handle it. This equation can be solved in two steps. You eliminate the 1 by adding both sides, adding 1 to both sides, and then divide both sides by 2, okay? So if you add 1 to both sides, you will have 2x equals 4. You have both sides by 2. And your final answer, x, is going to be equal to 2. So our answer is option number 2, all right? So that's that. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Really appreciate it. Do feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other great tutorials such as this. And also post a comment to let us know what um, you think about this presentation. You can give us a thumbs up if you like this clip. That would be great. Do follow us on Facebook or, on, or Twitter. And uh, the remainder of our clips can be found on mathgodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.